Hawa, hawa. We got the pure water flowing. Tribe up. Shabbat up. Shabbat way above the barrier. If you above the barrier with me. Shabbat shalom. 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 Tide battle got the water flowing. We're going to get these lions, dragons, and dragonflies. Oh my. By a Kati tide battle. She keeps the pure water flowing, so I figure, hey, let's keep the pure water flowing. We just got that uh, wonderful drop from Tide Battle, you know, for the Stewart family piece. A hop to the Stewart family. Just had their baby girl. Beautiful thing, man. Beautiful, beautiful power. Power. And, uh, you know, the sister wrote an amazing piece for that. Go get that drop. Go surf the wave, click Tide Battle, get the poetry. <laughs> like I said, you know, Tide Battle's the heartbeat, man. I mean, this is the heartbeat, the battle family. You know, when you say inspiration, when I look up and I, I, I see Chris Battle and the battle family, CJ, all the battle family, all the family that's connected to the battle family, all the pure water that the arrow has hit from Hawa, because Hawa is a strong archer. Hawa is a strong archer, and when he shoots an arrow, he don't miss. And all of you that this has hit, all you that the wave has touched, all of us that can see clearly, lions, dragons, and dragonflies, oh my! Man, vibrate up, Shabbat Shalom. You know what I'm saying, you know, got my uh, daddy dick here going on, you know what I mean? And uh, it's really, it's real dope, man. You know, my children really look forward to the Sabbath, you know, but right now we just, you know, I'm just trying to make them enjoy the Sabbath, you know, more than the Sabbath snack. You know what I'm saying? They get Sabbath snacks and every time they like, you know, they get real excited about what their Sabbath snack is going to be. And sometimes like, whoa, 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 don't lose focus. You know, we gotta we gotta take the snack away, you know what I mean? Mix it up around here. Milk and box it, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, you know, you know, you could try that, you know, we're trying things. I mean no one really pulled our coat, man, you know what I mean? We just trying. And the Sabbath snack kinda gets our children really at least in the cycle of, you know, oh, I'm get I'm gonna get real excited for something and then you can then op you know, fill all that in with the with the substance and that's what we're working on. You know, opening up, you know what I'm saying, reading to them, you know, that type of thing. Just having a conversation, even if it's a few minutes and everyone else, you know, does their own way of, of, of just, you know, meditating or just, you know what I'm saying, being in, in their flow as long as they are shutting it down and however they're doing it, you know what I'm saying. We're in different dimensions, so let it flow, you know what I'm saying, let the family flow and don't let your flow be hijacked. At least try to be conscious of it a day that you could just, you know, shut down, man, you know, shut down together. Then we are, you know, vibed up together. By shutting them down, we vibe up collectively. And we're talking about our collective redemption. Alright, we're just talking about, you know, that which was created to guard. To guard the gate. To be the guardians on the wall. I'm talking the battle family, man. You know what's dope, man? This is our, uh... 432nd video. Man. Queens and kings, man. Shalom, shalom, man. Look, we made it. Mama, we made it. We dropped 432 videos in about less than a year and a half, I, I presume. You know what I mean? We've only been around less than a year and a half, man. <laughs> and that first, uh, you know, when, when our radio station was in limbo... Uh, we started dropping here. We had 23 subscribers. 22 subscribers. So in less than a year and a half, you know what I'm saying, all praise Hawa, Drop Nation has built and built and built. And now we got over what, you know what I'm saying, some something, man. But it's been growing steadily. And it's all you that want, even if you want to refute it, you know what I mean, Somewhere you're going to get something that you can add to your puzzle. You know what I'm saying? We're trying to add to everyone's, you know, 
puzzle pieces that you're putting together in your own walk. You know, even if it's 5% of what we can drop, you know what I'm saying, that might connect to something to help you, that's all it is for, man. We're just asking the questions. We're not coming at you like we know it. You never hear me say, uh, you know, unequivocally, this is exactly what must be happening. I'm always reading it wow. with you. Wow. Asking the questions with you. Doing it with you. And speaking of questions, since it's the 432nd video, 432, since we're in the power of the nine on the Shabbat. Come on, man. Come on, man. I can't make this up. We dropping the 432nd video on the Shabbat. On the Shabbat. In the frequency of the nine. Wow. Oh, wow. And since we in the frequency, since we in that pure water and tide battle, keep the water flowing. We're going to go ahead and do some drop trivia. I mean, what's up? What's up? Y'all cool with that? We good? We in the goods? Yeah, man, I ain't forgot about you. We just had to, you know, get stocked up. Start stocking up around here. Y'all saw we got the Surf the Wave shirts dropping. You know what I mean? So, you know, let's do a Surf the Wave drop trivia. I'm just going to ask you one question. And the first Ah, man, how should we do it? How should we do it? What did we do? Three last time. You know, let's let's go ahead and do five. The first five people to email me at music, music at 432thedrop.com, music at 432thedrop.com. That can answer this question, you know. I'm sorry if you get this video later than someone else's, you know. They just happen to be surfing the wave. It, it was just meant to be for them to get the surf the wave shirt. All right. Deal with it, man. <laughs> nah, man. Let's go ahead and do it, man. It's for us, man. It's for our community. Let's go. Oh, and by the way, in order to participate, you must be subscribed to the site. All right. So I got your email and I know that you are pure water. You know what I mean? You ain't coming like no hijack, man. All right. Make sure you come over here. Yeah, man, we got that pure water flowing, man. Sounds a Judah, yo, Oh, man, we digging on it, man. We digging on it today. Log in. Go. Log in right here. You know what I mean? Register right here on the site, man. Register right there on the site, man. Go get it. You can also register right here. Join Drop Nation. This is pretty much our general registry. And the other one you need to uh, log in to drop comments specifically on the site. So this one or that one, you can do them both. And if you registered, you know what I mean? Then you can go ahead and email me, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. And answer this question to get your Surf the Wave shirt mailed directly to you. Where is the dragon's lair? Bang, bang, bang. Surf the wave. I mean, you know, come on. You've been surfing the wave. I know they try to, you know, say there's multiple ones. But what's the one that, you know, we've been surfing on, you know what I'm saying? Pretty much the whole entire time we've been dropping in this year and a half or so. All right. So, love to y'all. Hop to y'all on our 432nd video. That's the kind of stuff I get excited about. Because that's, that's that shows the work. I know that each video we know is always going to be you know over you know hour and a half or so so when you put in those hours and you add them all up that's how much sheesh you know hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours of investigation and when you put all of us together as drop nation we talking tens of thousands of hours of investigation to get to where we are today in this moment to be digging on things and see clearly to see clearly to see Dragon, Dragon, to see clearly. And we're digging on seeing clearly, right? We're digging on knowing, we're digging on seeing. Alright, alright, alright. Oh man. Yeah, go ahead and email me, man. Music at 432thedrop.com. Where is the dragon's lair? You know what I mean? First five people, you got a shirt. Just like that. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? You win that, hit me with your shirt size and shoot me your uh, shipping address. You know what I mean? Boom, boom. Where's the homie, man?
Hey, man, love to uh, Paco, man. Wonderful drop, man. Definitely get that Paco Cedar oil in the drop shop. Support Sister Vanessa's drop as well in the drop shop. Drop of the week. You know, this is where we just, you know, just showcase all of y'all, man. All the all the hard work, man. Uh, peace and a hive to Arthur Scott. You know what I'm saying? Drop some wonderful drop today. I'm going a, I'm to a drop that over here soon as well. You know, we just keep it flowing. And, uh, yeah, man, everyone dropping that drop, man. A hive, a hive. So, let's get that pure water going with Ty Bapto and get our dragon investigation going. We just investigating, asking questions, being scientific. Looking for repeatable and observable science. Same as we've done since day one. Repeatable and observable science. A hop to Isaac Ford, man. This Devin the dude is popping. It's playing live right now at the drive radio if you're digging on it. Lions, dragons, and dragonflies. Oh my. By a Kati Thai battle. Lions are the mighty Judah and are the symbol of our pride. Dragons guard our caves and treasures that they hide. Dragonflies bring protection to our lost or scattered tribe. These things are here for us to use as guides. Lions roam the near lands and the ones far and wide. Dragons cover the land and seas as they soar and glide. Dragonflies hover about us and are always at our side. These things are loose for you, that you are forever tied. Lions have confidence about them as they strut and stride. Dragons have the ring of fire and are there for us to ride. Dragonflies see around and they possess a special vibe. We were never aware of these. So many of us have died. Lions, dragons, and dragonflies. Oh my. Bakati Ta. Aha, aha to the battle family. Come on, man. You see this working in real time. This sister does nothing but send alley oops. And what do we do? Man, we do 360 Vince Carter. You know what I'm saying? We just leave our uh leave our arm in the basket, man. Just, just hover. We just hover. We just hover. That's what we do, man. It's Drive Nation, man. Our sister is just giving us that pure water. Keeping the pure water going. Sounds of Yahuda. Man, put this on around your house, let it flow. It's gonna keep looping and you just get nothing but a water conversation that it goes deeper and deeper the more you listen to it, man. And, you know what I mean? That was captured, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> that was captured directly, man. So, you know, just know that you're getting that pure water, you know what I mean? Directly from us to you. Directly from us to you. All right, man, where we going to go with it, man? All right, man, let's just do it like this, man. Let's jump right in there. Love to my sister Larissa, Larissa Freeman, who dropped this wonderful uh, drop on us, you know what I'm saying? With the creation of the world, the first things created. And we read some of this, you know what I'm saying, with this Ruach and this Torah. Now this Torah is the energy of your mother, your framer. This is the connection that was lost in their Judaism. The Torah is wisdom. The law is your mother. You're in the vibration of your father. You're being shaped and molded by your father because that's what sound does. But you're connected through your law, through your vibration. That's why we know each other through vibration, through our law, through our vibration, through how our mother flows through us is how we know each other. When we see each other, we can say, oh, I can tell my mama is rocking with you. Wow, oh, wow, oh, wow, I can feel my mother in you. And I see that you've been formed and molded and shaped in the vibration of my father. And all of that is one vibration. All of that is one. That's the one power we serve. We serve one power. But, oh boy, you better put it back together to get the full flow and know that one is not without the other. Wow. Oh, wow. So let's 
So the sister man dropped this Leviathan drop, and you know, I want to get a piece of that again. And, uh, you know, I know, uh, you know what I'm saying, we've been digging on, you know, you know, loosely, a lot of people been digging on the uh, September 23rd, but Perusalem, man, dig on Perusalem, he really broke it down. He got a whole count that he's been working on that I think is a beautiful, beautiful flow. And it's a piece that, you know, a lot of us kind of overlook, you know, when it comes to really searching even deeper, you know what I'm saying, into how it all connects. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what's going on. I don't know if anything's happening specifically, you know, during this time right now. We don't know. You know what I'm saying? We can't confirm or deny. We don't, you know, know specifically, you know what I'm saying, our, our times and all this stuff. But the way the brother's done it, you know, with the eclipse is very, very, it's a very interesting wave to surf, man. Wait, wave to surf, man. It's, it's worth surfing. It's worth digging on. And regardless of anything happens on September 23rd or what, what the real time is, whenever the real September 23rd is, you know what I'm saying, whatever we're talking about, um, you know what I'm saying, we know that we're getting all this in a very smooth flow right now, you know what I mean? So, you know what I'm saying, like my sister Larissa sent us this, and this is really connecting a lot with this Leviathan, you know what I mean? Because... You know, the first drop I did, um, you know what I'm saying, after she gave us this doc and then she sent me an email and she, you know, said, make sure you check out the etymology of Leviathan. You know, so we're surfing the wave. My sisters, man, Miss D in the Copper Color Awakening, my sisters, man, M.A. Truth, my sisters, man, Katrina Green is cancer free, my sisters, man, let go. Leviathan, all right, sea monster, sea serpent, sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. <laughs> Come on, are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? Are you getting it? All right, you about to get it. You about to get it. Rock with me, man. Let's just ask a couple questions since, you know, we got to put Humpty Dumpty back together again. We know they put this sorcery on it. You got to let go of everything you think you know. You can't be af afraid to let go for a second of what you think you truly know. Because the wisdom of old, of what we call, you know what I'm saying? Oh, I've known this for so long. It's only been a blink of an eye. And what's coming back is the ancient reality. Leviathan. Now, we know Leviathan is a protector, right? More than a protector, I mean, a nurturer. You know what I'm saying? The way the Most High is planning on using Leviathan, what do we say? In this uh, sacred text here. Let's see. So the ruler over the sea animals is Leviathan. I know it's very small, so you know, pull it up. You got the link. The ruler of the sea animals is Leviathan. With all the other fish, he was made on the fifth day. Originally, it was created male and female, like all the other animals. But when it appeared that a pair of these monsters might annihilate the whole earth with their united strength, God killed the female. So enormous is Leviathan. That to quench his thirst, he needs all the water that flows from the Jordan into the sea. His food consists of fish which go between his jaws of their own accord. When he is hungry, a hot breath blows from his nostrils. And it makes the waters of the great sea seething hot, formidable though Behemoth, the other monster, is he feels insecure until he is certain that Leviathan has satisfied his thirst. The only thing that can keep him in check is the stickleback, a little fish which was created for the purpose, and of which he stands in great awe. So the stickleback is kind of like the counter that the creator created to keep him in check, right? a little fish. Right? But Leviathan is more than merely large and strong. He is wonderfully made. Besides, his fins radiate brilliant light. Now this light, watch what happens to this light. 
because your dragons also radiate light. The very sun is obscured by it, and also his eyes shed such splendor that frequently the sea is illuminated suddenly by it. No wonder that this marvelous beast is the plaything of Hawa, in which he takes his pastime. Now, the real purpose of Leviathan is to be served up as a dainty or a delicacy to the righteous, they say pious, which we know is righteous, in the world to come. So he's supposed to be a delicacy to the righteous. He's supposed to eat Leviathan. That's his real purpose. The female was put into brine, into brine as soon as she was killed, into brine as soon as she was killed. So she started getting, you know what I'm saying, brined up, man. I mean, I, she, I, bet, I bet it's bomb. This is a fish we're talking, right? Or what they're calling a sea serpent or a dragon. But it's being made specially by Hawa. That's all I know from what I'm surfing on. The female was put into brine as soon as she was killed. She started being prepared to be preserved against the time when her flesh will be needed. Mosai has preserved her to be eaten just like Leviathan. That's both of their purpose anyway. The male is destined to offer a delectable sight to all beholders before he is consumed. When his last hour arrives, now this is where we're going to surf the wave with Revelations 12. Because you know, we're hijack free. We like to keep our, you know what I'm saying, wave flowing and get the babies out. Of course, we know there's a lot of babies being hidden in the sorcery that's been presented. Especially in what they're calling the New Testament. However, you know what I'm saying, you know, those babies do connect. You know, you just got to kind of have a perspective on them so i want to surf the wave of a perspective since we're talking about these signs and revelation right now and it's very important you know what i mean for us all to you know you know ask these questions man so all right so leviathan he says when his last hour arrives hawa will summon the angels to enter into combat with the monster all right so let's stay right there remember Leviathan, sea monster, sea serpent, sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. Sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. I wonder when those sometimes are. I wonder when those times are that something that was created for a specific people will be regarded as a devil. Is it the same time that they regarded the dragons as devils because they were attacking them? Because the dragons were protecting you and attacking them, they were called devils. Because you were attacking them, you were called devils. Are you getting it? What's called a devil to them is the opposite of that. If they call it Satan, it's the opposite. If they call it Christ, it's the opposite. Hawa. Wow. If they call you a devil, they're calling you a god in real time. If they're saying that the sea serpent is regarded as a form of Satan, then he's saying this sea serpent is representing Hawa. It is a representation of the greatness of Hawa. Now look, from Hebrew, Lev Yatan, Lev Yatan, meaning dragon dragon and when you look at the etymology again of dragon you find a giant sea fish so it seems to be an interchangeable thing between a dragon and this you know what I'm saying sea fish of giant proportion so you know what are they referring to the marine dragons you know the dragons that live in the sea and is this a huge dragon of the sea but it's also considered a fish and this particular one is a special treat <laughs> you know huge serpent dragon and then we kept going and that's when we got from the stem of dark cast eye to see clearly to see all right to see clearly to see clearly so when you Look at the intention that was originally put on this crystal, on this word that we're calling dragon. 
in the mind of a hijack, it only meant to see clearly. And we got before that the dragonfly can do what? To see the eyes of the dragonfly are one of the most amazing and awe-inspiring sights given almost 80% of the insect's brain power is, di is dedicated to its sight and the fact that it can see in all 360 degrees around it it symbolizes the uninhibited vision of the mind and the ability to see beyond the limitations dragon to see clearly dragon fly to see beyond the limitations of the human self beyond the barriers it also in a manner of speaking symbolizes a man woman's rising from the materialism or the illusion the matrix you're coming out the matrix to be able to see beyond the mundane into reality my people into the vastness that is really into reality that is really our universe and our own minds you're coming together to see the dragon represents to see clearly. The dragonfly represents to see beyond the limitations. Hawa is I am. I exist. I am existence. When you fully are in reality, you see beyond the limitations. Beyond the mundane. Beyond the materialism. Beyond the matrix. Into the vastness that is your reality dragon to see clearly leviathan dragon <laughs> so leviathan also represents seeing clearly oh sometimes regarded as a devil satan you know what i mean that's their twist look to to, to wind turn twist that's their twist now revelations Oh, the popular Revelations 12, baby. Well, we surfed the wave and we, you know, have dug, you know, into this, you know what I'm saying? Get the piece so drop and all that, man. And, you know, all this stuff was created for you. So clearly you have to untangle it. You can't just read it off straight up. That's not how you solve a mystery. You have to have a path you're surfing have a perspective and see it from a unique perspective to try to unlock what's written inside of here that's been re and re and re translated into a sorcery spell so great red dragon does not mean great red dragon who wrote that who put dragon there who put dragon there who put red dragon i want to meet him i want to meet who put red dragon here you feel me I can't. So I got to take their word for it. And I'm not comfortable with that. And you shouldn't be. But. If you had to surf the wave of this red dragon. Let's uh, see what we got. Revelations 12.1. Let's journey into the mind of a hijack and get the babies out. You get some babies out. See it from a fresh perspective with your pure water flowing. Through reality, through your time, not their time, through your sign, not their sign. And there appeared a great wonder in heaven. Right now, we know we're talking the celestial. We're not talking above the barrier, the higher heavens. We're just talking about, uh, I like to call it hijack city. I like to call it, um, uh, uh, you know, Suckerville, USA. You know, these are the, for the most part, entities that are not allowed above the barrier to the real party. So it's a lower heaven. It's a underworld. All right. When you come across the anoint, their anointed, you're always referring to their Lord, their Baal, their energy. Always. But they disguise themselves to suck you dry by giving out some of your babies. And you feel it because it's your baby. But they, you know, uh, 
direct it, you know what I'm saying, into another direction, you know what I'm saying, just to throw you off. So that's how we know that they, you know, operate. You know, we see our babies in here, then they redirect it where they put a hijack or some barrier, you know what I mean? So again, and there appeared a great wonder in heaven. This is the underworld, under the barrier. We're talking celestial. All right. A woman clothed with the sun. Now, who's this celestial woman clothed with the sun? I know that the popular, you know, Christians that break down, especially, you know, the ones I see, um, you know, just Google, you know, or, or YouTube, September 23rd. Most people, 99% of those folks are Christians and they break it down in the Christian mentality. And the woman, even the ones that are thinking outside the box, they'll say, oh, the woman represents the nation of Israel. The woman represents Israel. The woman represents Israel. Well, we know who claims to be Israel today. So let's just take a step back. The woman represents the people that claim to be Israel today. So what if the woman did not represent you, but it represented them and their seed and the seed that she is about to have for them? And the seed that gets called up to heaven or the celestial to be with his celestial pops, to be with Zeus. Remember, Jupiter is the son of Saturn. Jupiter is the son of Saturn. When Jupiter is being born out of this woman, it's the son of Satan. It's Saturn's son. It's Satan. It's Apollo. Is Satan's son, Apollo, Apollyon, coming back for the keys to the bottomless pit? Because that's what he does. He has a kingdom and he's going to rule it, which means he's still working for the creator because they all do when you come down to it. Jupiter or Nibiru, Nibiru means cross, crossing. Nibiru is Jupiter and they worship Jupiter, right? They worship Zeus, right? Jupiter is Zeus. He is Zeus is Jesus. Jesus is Christ. And that's who they're worshiping with this new test. Hawa. So let's surf the wave, shall we? And there appeared a great wonder in the celestial heaven. A woman clothed with the sun. Whose son? Okay. And the moon under her feet, whose moon? The crescent moon. And upon her head, a crown of 12 stars. Wow. Whatever those 12 deities are that are in the underworld. And she being with child, cried, travailed in birth and pain to be delivered. So now they got... All these celestial models with this woman giving birth to Jupiter, who is Zeus, who is Apollo, who is Abaddon. It's not a good child, which is why the dragon was waiting to devour it. Your dragon. Let's surf the wave. And she being with child cried, travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great red dragon so let's surf the wave that this is a good dragon not the scary bad dragon the christians talk about let's surf the wave that they just reversed you but they're actually kind of telling you the story what's really popping and then we're going to surf the wave with leviathan 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 the ruler of all the sea animals leviathan is also called a what dragon and what happens with Leviathan? He got rolled up, all right. When his last hour arrives, Hawa will summon the angels to enter into combat with the monster. But no sooner will Leviathan cast his glance at them, and they will flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle. Wait a minute. You mean this dragon is so powerful. Remember, dragons have six limbs, right? So when you look at the story of these angels, you always see, you know, people with two arms, two legs, and 
their wings, which are six limbs. Now you only find that with these dragons and these dragonflies, which are representative of these angels, but which one? Some dragons are hijacked, sure. Some are pure water. And you've been given one side of the coin and we're flipping it and reversing it and seeing what we can find, the treasures, the drop, the babies, the purified substance. Now he gets rolled up on and he gives them one look and all of the most high's angels get scared to death. Now I know that sounds like, whoa, but the most high's angels, well, yeah, Leviathan, remember that was his plaything. That was his, that was his experiment. I mean, Leviathan, he put a lot of work into Leviathan. So I don't think he created any angel to take on, you know what I'm saying, all the drop. Leviathan had to protect you for a long time, man. Let's go. Let's go. So let's read this with Leviathan in mind as the dragon. Let's read this with Leviathan as the dragon. I don't think that's been done before. Let's surf the wave. And she being with child, she's giving birth to Jupiter, right? In the uh, celestial models, all right? Travailing in birth and pain to be delivered. And there appeared another wonder in heaven. Behold, a great Leviathan. Okay. Let's just try. Having seven heads and ten horns. And seven crowns upon his head. All right. Keep it. Stay focused. A big ass dragon. And his tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven and cast them to the earth. Focus, focus, focus. Who are the stars in heaven, my people? Who's the Hollywood stars? They're the actual devils, right? They're the actual black. They're the actual destitute of light. They're the actual you know, ones that are trapped and can't go above the barrier. These are the fallen ones. There's a difference between us and them. We can't be fallen angels because we were created in a different order than angels. We're not angels at all. We are Hawa. We are the signature, the image. We're, we're that. <laughs> we're that original image. The angels are not in the image of Hawa. This is just facts. We are not angels at all. They're what they're calling angels. And these dragons are also angels. And this tail drew the third part of the stars of heaven. So Leviathan whooped all of these stars ass. All of these fallen angels ass. And cast them to the earth. See when you're reading this as a Christian. You're like oh the stars of heaven. So beautiful. When you read this awake. You say oh you mean the hijack. So his tail. Drew the third part of the hijack. And cast them down to be judged. Let's go back to the, to, to our uh, sacred text here on Leviathan. I mean, don't please, please don't tell me that these words are holding more value than these words in English. Oh, please don't tell me that the source of this is more pure water than the source of this. That's a whole nother conversation. This ain't what's given to you in Sunday school. This is what's given to you in Sunday school. Let's go. Hawa will summon the angels to enter into combat with the monster, the dragon. But no sooner will the dragon, Leviathan, cast his glance at them, cast his glance at them, and did he cast them to the earth. We're just surfing the wave. And his tail drew the third part of these hijacks into the earth. <laughs> Leviathan. We just talking dragons, man. We just, hey, you know, I just decided, you know, 
I haven't really read this in such a long time. You know, I, I just want to do it with you. With perspective of a dragon or a dragonfly that sees beyond the limitations of their sorcery. So here it says, uh, and the dragon stood before the woman, the celestial mother of heaven, who's giving birth to Satan's spawn, Jupiter, Jesus, Christ. And they want to, and they want you to read this story. Oh, Christ then gets called up to heaven. No, their Christ gets called up to their heaven, man. We have to read this without limitations of the human self. I mean, the hijack is real. It's real, you real, right? We in reality, right? We're rising from the materialism above the mundane into the vastness of that which, of that vastness that is really reality in reality, our universe, our own minds, our own minds. We're hijacking ourselves. When we're in the mind of a hijack. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to be delivered. All right. So, wow. Wow. so he stood first he whooped up all these fallen angels cast them into earth I think he did Hawa's work now he's standing in front of this hijacked celestial queen of heaven who's about to deliver Zeus and his immediate instinct as a real nigga is to devour this Zeus this rebirth of their Zeus why for to devour her child as soon as it was born oh the christian says oh no don't devour my messiah motherfucker jones motherfucker jones that is their god of war and this is their their story of their celestial hijack war and christ all throughout this is representing lucifer but he's using Joshua's drop to do it. He's using Elijah's drop to do it. He's using Moshe's drop to do it. And they sat here and they threaded the needle over and over again. Over and over again. And now we're reading it in motherfucking English. We're just reading it off the page like it's the thing to do. When we wake up, we have to fully wake up. And when you've been invaded and they're handing you stuff, when you're awoke, you say, am I honestly supposed to take your word for something so important or should I surf the wave and connect it? Hawa was summoned the angels to enter into combat with the dragon. But no sooner will the dragon cast his glance at them that they will flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle. So Hawa summoning the angels, he's summoning the same stars, the same fallen angels. <laughs> Cause they work for him. He's not summoning, you know what I mean? And here he he, he says, ah, oh, you know, then Michael, you know what I mean? Oh, Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, right? Okay. Well, regardless of what order these angels was in, they all got their ass kicked. Real spill. By this super duper angel, Leviathan. Okay. Now look. Hawa will summon the angels to enter into combat with the dragon. But no sooner will the dragon cast his glance at them than they will flee in fear and dismay from the field of battle, which is the celestial, which means they got what? And his tail, Leviathan, drew the third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to earth. And the dragon stood before the woman 
which was ready to be delivered for to devour her child as soon as it was born. And she brought forth a man child, of course. Zeus was reborn, who was to rule over all nations with the rod of iron. Tell me which one um, of our priest kings ruled over us with a rod of iron. I'll wait. Does this sound like some type of fun situation to you? To be ruled on with the rod of iron? Oh no, but the Torah is like the rod. No, the Torah is pure water. The Torah is your mother. You take the vibration that you've been shaped in from your father and you combine it with your mother, which is wisdom. Then you'll be fortified. So this hijacked queen mother brought forth a man child, Zeus, Jupiter, right? Who was to rule over all nations with the rod of iron. Sounds like slavery. I don't know. And her child was caught up unto their God. Not your God. Oh, you thought that meant the creator? Her child was caught up to the creator. He can't get above the barrier. His papa can't get above the barrier. Hell no, nah, the child can't get above the barrier. And her child was caught up to their dog. They're serious. King Hijack. <laughs> and to his throne. Underneath the barrier. And the woman fled into the wilderness. Where she had a place prepared of God. That they should feed her there. A thousand two hundred and three score days. So. She had a place prepared by Baal. Her energy. He has places here too. And there was a war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon. And the dragon fought. And the dragon fought. And his angels. So we're just talking multiple dragons. Right? And prevailed not. Neither was their place found anymore in heaven. And that's the interesting thing. Of course they're going to end the story like they want to. Right? They're going to end the story like they want to. Right? But when we get it. I'm going to surf the wave. But no sooner will Leviathan cast his glance on them. The stars. Right? The angels. Then they will flee into fear. And fear and dismay from the field of battle. They will return to the charge with swords but in vain whoa so he wasn't defeated by the angels they will return to the charge with swords but in vain for his scales can turn back steels like straw they will be equally unsuccessful when they attempt to kill him by throwing darts and slinging stones which one is the real story you think revelations is or do you think you have to find it when you're ready, when the books are being unsealed and allow yourself to be shaped and molded and see clearly. When they attempt to kill the dragon by throwing darts and slinging stones, such missiles will rebound without leaving the least impression on his body. Disheartened, the angels will give up the combat. And Hawa will command Leviathan and Behemoth to enter into a duel with each other. Disheartened, the angels will give up the combat. And Hawa will command Leviathan to have to scrap with his equal, which is Behemoth. In order to what do what? The issue will be that both will drop dead. So yeah, Leviathan is killed because he was meant to be killed so that he will feed the tribe one day. The issue would be that both will drop dead. So because Leviathan must drop dead, that is his purpose, right? Read this again with clearer vision. Pure water. And there was war in heaven. Michael and his angels fought against Leviathan, the dragon, and his angels. The dragon fought and his angels and prevailed not. So eventually... He did get killed by Behemoth, not by the angels. The angels were fearful. They couldn't even penetrate him, according to this sacred text over here. 
So which one of the stories do you believe? The one that was handed to you on a on a silver platter? <laughs> Encoded to the... I'm, I'm reading right out this KJV. KJV. Right out the KJV just like you. Oh, the Romans erased us, right? Do you think they gave you the drop word for word? Or must you search it out? Disheartened, the angels will give up the combat. And Hawa will command Leviathan and Behemoth to enter into a duel with each other. The issue will be that both will drop dead. Behemoth slaughtered by a blow of Leviathan's fin. Hawa. And Leviathan killed by a lash of Behemoth's tail. From the skin, listen my people, Hawa, Hawa. From the skin of Leviathan, Hawa will construct tents to shelter companies of the righteous. While they enjoy the dishes made of his flesh, the amount assigned to each of the righteous will be in proportion to his deserts, to his plot. Hawa. And none will envy or begrudge the other his better share. No one will be envious. When they eat that much of this great flesh. What is left of Leviathan's skin will be stretched over Jerusalem or Jerusalem as a canopy. So tents and canopies and food is what's coming out of Leviathan. The dragon, who they call Satan, right? But Satan is having a child and it's coming through this woman. Oh, her birth canal, 923, right? That's their war. Bring it on. What is left of Leviathan's skin will be stretched over, out over Jerusalem as a canopy. And the light streaming from it will illuminate the whole world. And what is left of his flesh after the righteous have appeased their appetite, after the Negro has been fully fulfilled, then the rest will be distributed among the rest of men to carry on traffic therewith. And that's what's going on with Leviathan. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent. Oh, well, I guess he had to die, right? I guess he was sacrificed, right? You want to focus on the sacrifice of Christ? This is going to feed you and shelter you, but you don't give a shit. The dragon gets sacrificed. The dragon got sacrificed. The dragon got sacrificed over and over and over again. And you want to rock with their history, their sorcery. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, the devil, the devil, and Satan, the serpent called Satan. Can we put the mystery clues together? And the serpent called Satan, sometimes regarded as a form of Satan. Leviathan. And the dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Regarded as a form of Satan, Leviathan. What's the drop? The real purpose of Leviathan is to be served up as a delicacy, a sacrifice to the righteous in the world to come. From the skin of Leviathan, Hawa will construct tents to shelter companies of the righteous while they enjoy the dishes made of his flesh. With what is left of Leviathan, the dragon skin will be stretched out over Jerusalem, the promised land, as a canopy, a shield, a shelter. And the light streaming from it will illuminate the whole world. Satan, sometimes called. And the dragon was cast out, called Satan, sometimes, by them. Which deceived the whole world. Oh, while they're deceiving you, they're saying someone else is deceiving you. Oh, I get it. Like, 
like a magician, you know, watch the other hand. He was cast out into the earth and his angels were cast out with him. So now they're just flipping the script, flipping the story. Then they get into their power of their Christ. And the power of their Christ, not the power of your Hawa. So we digging on Leviathan from a pure water perspective, you know, a fresh water perspective. It's not about, you know, having a theory that you deem correct. I'm not going to sit here for a thousand years to explain it to you know, one, one person here, but to really throw it out, you know, as a wave to surf, to connect to, you know what I'm saying, more and more pure water. And we can't read this verbatim because we're not asleep anymore. We have to look and say, what is a dragon? Who is being called the dragon? Leviathan is being called the dragon. He's also being called Satan here. He's also being called Satan here. Oh, the devil. Oh, Satan. And then we say, oh, he's sometimes called Satan. Well, damn, that's kind of fucked up. Because for some reason, his skin is creating a shelter for you. And lighting up the whole world. But he's the devil. So we know our dragons are getting a bad rap. And again, love to our sister Vanessa. Excuse me, our sister uh, Larissa. <laughs> and our sister Vanessa. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, but yeah, Larissa, you know, really did a wonderful job with this. And, you know, giving us that. So it came right on time, man. Again, love to Hawa Stew, man. Support Hawa Stew. You know, go ahead and click on it, man. Make sure that you are getting all the drop. Supporting Hawa Stew. I want to jump right here. And to this part that we got before, I want to jump to the eight minute mark because she said something very interesting and we just found something very interesting. All right, so let's see what she got to say around here, man. Let's get it. Let's pause the water for a sec. We're going to keep it flowing. We're just going to turn it way down so we can kind of flow on a low scope. Love again to Sister Larissa for that. And we're putting it together, you know what I mean, in real time. In real time, I say. In real time. All right, let's get it from here. Let's turn it way up. And listen closely. Carmen. These fearsome beasts were often seen as gatekeepers to other realities and guardians of treasure and spiritual wisdom. There is a common theme throughout much of world mythology in which the hero does battle with a dragon in order to secure a hoard of treasure. As you know, if, you, if you've been watching the Hobbit movies, it's all about the gold. So um, dragon, of course, again, it's neutral. It just symbolizes their own greed. So they say dragons want the gold, but they just actually reflect the greed of those who also wanted the gold just for themselves and to keep it. Your gold. Um, Where's the Aztec gold? Where's your gold, Negro? C cities of gold. Who's protecting the cities of gold that are built on dragon lines? Dragons? Cons? Come on. So they were, um, they were um, gatekeepers to other realities, and this is what they're now. When you merge with this essence, it really becomes an experience when new worlds, um, the insights into new worlds and other dimensions become more apparent to us. So um, these um, mythologies in which the hero does battle with the dragon to secure a horde, examples include the Greek hero Jason. I don't know if you've been watching the, the TV show called Atlantis. It's a very similar style to the Merlin TV show. Again, it has lots of legends kind of built in their own way. So they kind of use these examples and you have to use your discernment, of course, to know what's what's, but there's a lot Start of messages that can come through such um, series that have that kind of topic. And the Celtic and Germans heroes, Arthur, this is the Merlin saga, Tristam, Beowulf, and Sigurd. In India, in the Naga region of Assam, the local tribes, tribes tell of dragons who may assume human or half-human, half-reptile form. They are guardians of treasure, most notably pearls. Again, you know, it's connected with that wealth and um, um, coins and golds and pearls. Links between dragons and pearls can be found in many other cultures as well. Chinese dragons are depicted with thunder pearls in their mouths that they spit out. In other traditions, dragon deities are connected to the moon, the night shining pearl, or, <laughs> I just have one hand, so <laughs> that's how it is, or the pearl of heaven, mm. as it is called in Mexico. Wow. Buddhist legends from India and Japan tell of the precious pearl that grants all desires that is obtained from the sea dragon. One of the earliest written records relating to dragons comes from the um, Herodotus, the Greek father of history. 
and in the 5th century before um, Christ. He describes the dragon as a creature of both water and land. As you know, there's still many legends of the creatures like the, um, in Scotland, you know, we have the Loch Ness and the sea monster that many of the people don't yet know about. But these are all beings that also link with the inner earth and sometimes they come to the surface. And I think this is explained in one of Dolores Cannon's books as well. So uh, he says it lays its eggs on the land and lives there during the daytime while at night it lives in the water. Its claws are strong and the scaly, the scaly skin on its back cannot be sundered. 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 <laughs> yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Hmm. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. That's that's a bit weird as well. You know? How weird is it, lady? Eggs of stone or aged trees. Trees are mountains. Mountains are trees. Hmm. Dragons are born from eggs of stone. It arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. That's that's a bit weird as well. You know how people like... Oh, people like to make shit up. Ah, for some reason, that's the only one that she felt the need to refute right away. That's a bit weird. Listen to all the weird hypothesis she brings up about these dragons. No, no problem, no sweat. But when she gets to the uh, eggs of stone and being born of out the aged trees, she wasn't connecting those two mountains. And she probably haven't seen this drop we about to drop. But let's listen to it again. It's eggs on the land and lives there during the daytime while at night it lives in the water. Its claws are strong and the scaly, the scaly skin on its back cannot be sundered. 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 <laughs> yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. That's that's a bit weird as well. You know how people like to interpret legends in their own way. In most traditions... All right, lady, you did say that's weird earlier too. M my busy. But my point is, this shit ain't that weird. Aged trees, stone eggs... Well, let's just take that into this uh, consideration here. Science drop. You ain't got that science drop? What are you doing? Science drop. Scientists are baffled by a mysterious mountain. Mountains are trees that lay eggs. Dragon eggs. You know, I put that in. You know what I'm saying? I put that. Remember, man, we're just talking dragons and we're talking dragonflies. Oh, yeah. We're talking dragonflies. Now, I know that's probably some type of superimposed dragon head on the fly, dragonfly. But I needed to give you that shock factor so you can put this shit together. Now, we know what dragonfly look like. We know what the beautiful dragonfly look like. Now, look at these wings. I mean, wouldn't this be what a dragon skin would look like? You know? Your day. Look at these eyes. You remember? 80% of his brain is going into vision, and he has 360 degree vision. He sees clearly, or she sees clearly. Do you remember that mountains are trees? I mean, of course we dropped that, you know. But do you remember what your trees look like? Especially what they look like when they've been cut down. Do you know what your trees look like when they've been cut down? Just like the so-called Negro. Any coincidence between your trees being cut down? This is a tree stump. 
There's no such thing as a flat top mountain. You're talking about angelic weapons, angelic power, the power of the sun. You're talking about energy that will slice the shit out of this tree or mountain. You're talking about Hawa's energy that said, nope, you cannot reach me until you're ready. I'll let you stay there. I won't uproot you, Negro. I won't uproot you. I'll keep the remnant. I'll keep you rooted, but I'm cutting your dreadlocks. I'm cutting the trees so you can't reach me. So more importantly, so that other nations cannot hijack the crystal. Of course, they're going to try to hijack the grid, but they can't hijack the fullness of the tree. And your mother was split apart. Oh, your mother was split apart. And she's coming back together again. The sky is falling, boss. You know what a tree look like, right? You know what a tree stump looks like, right? And we're saying that these dragons are possibly being, you know, coming from these ancient trees. Or mountains, which are trees. The mountains you see, whether they're flat or crooked like Mount Everest, is a broken tree or a sliced tree. Surf the way. I mean, you know what a tree stump looks like. I said, you know what a tree stump looks like. Tree stump on your right. You've seen that a million times. Look to your left. Another tree stump. But you probably thought that was a mountain. That is the stump of a giant crystal tree. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. One more time. One more time. Dragon is a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say that dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from seed plants or aged pine trees. That's that's a bit weird as well. All right. How weird is it? How weird is it? I would think it's weird too if sci if scientists weren't baffled by a mysterious tree. Tree. Mountain. Tree. That lay eggs. A tree that lays eggs. We heard some stuff like this in the pop of up, right? But let's go. Let's go. Let's see what they're talking about. Might, might be something. Might be nothing. You know, I know. Kind of creepy, right? A tree that lays eggs. A tree that lays eggs. A tree that lays eggs? What? Sundry. Sundry. <laughs> Yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or, or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. Aged pine trees. Mountains, trees, mountains, trees, mountains, trees. Mountains, trees, let go. Wow. Oh, wow. A rural and small Chinese village has been in the media spotlight because of a mysterious cliff face that is said to lay eggs. The so-called egg-laying cliff, situated in southeast China, regularly produces large round rocks as heavy as 660 pounds, according to the locals. It's said that the stone eggs would drop from the cliff once every three decades or so. Scientists are yet to give an official explanation. Is it play play? Is it play play? I'm not making this shit up. I'm surfing away with you. Hijack or not? Hijack or not? God, I mean, repetition breaks the spell. You came here for this. Sundry. 
Sundered. <laughs> yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born... Stones. So you got these stone eggs. Stones. Born of stones. Born from sea plants or aged pine trees. That's... Or aged trees. Remember the tree. The tree drop love to teach, man. Love to Peru. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? True tribe, man. It's all tribal, man. So, you know what I'm saying? Aged trees. Pine trees are one of the sacred trees like the cedar right man so we're talking about it's born from a sacred tree a sacred mountain a sacred tree these trees are cut but these dragons still vibe with the trees this is avatar shit man avatar shit avatar shit is it play play explanation to the phenomenon the unusual mountain is located in the Gizhu province in the Gyalozai village where the minority Shui people have lived for about 1,000 years. According to a previous report on DW News, the egg-laying cliff, or Chan Danya in Chinese, is an area measuring 20 meters long. Are you seeing this shit? These are, these are dragon eggs coming out of a ancient tree. I can't make this shit up. Again. One more time, eh? One more time. So uh, he says it lays its eggs on the land and lives there during the daytime, while at night it lives in the water. Its claws are strong, and the scaly the scaly skin on its back cannot be sundered. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. Any questions? Stones as snakes, they probably look like that when they come out before they get, you know, their wing, you know, really, I don't know. But she just put the stone thing out there, born out of stones, of course, because they're impenetrable, right? They have a hard shell, so it's like a stone shell. And watch how these people start collecting this stuff. These people have collected hundreds of these, hundreds of your ancient dragons that are being reborn. Your dragons are being born probably all over the place right the fuck now in these ancient mountains that are trees. You just got to look for them. 66 feet and 6 meters wide, 20 feet on an unnamed mountain in the village. Stone eggs would reportedly grow from the cliff face and eventually drop to the ground. The spheres have a diameter between 30 and 60 centimeters. 11.8 inches and 23.6 inches, and could weigh up to 300 kilograms, 660 pounds. These rock spheres are thought to be lucky by the residents. They're thought to be lucky because they have positive energy. Because they're pure water, being born out of a pure water vibration, directly out of the tree. You might know them as mountains. This is play play. Y'all think this is play play? Y'all think this is play play? What's the difference? Between Mount Everest and a tree stump. Whether your trees were broken or whether they were sliced and diced, they are trees. And I guarantee you that there are dragons growing all over the dang on place all over the world. And this is a secret 
that the Negro's dragons are coming back to protect the Negro. At the right time. At the right time. Look at your babies. They're coming out of your trees. Which one is yours? Because if you controlled a dragon, I think that would be better than an AK, right? Wakey, wakey. Wake up in reality, man. You have different weapons than they told you about. You come from an ancient world, Negro. An ancient world. This is China, man. Ancient trees in ancient China, man. What's happening in South America? What's happening in the Four Corners? Who would pick them up and worship them at home? What? A recently video report on QQ.com claimed Fox fears are thought to be lucky by the residents. Who would pick them up and worship them at home? They worship your dragons. I can't make this shit up. They worship your dragons, Negro. They worship every essence of you. Everything that's good to them is you. And they don't even know it. They shun the Negro and worship his his dragon pets. Except we know that we are the dragon. And there's no separation between us and our fire, water, ether, and our earth. Hawa. A recently video report on QQ.com claimed that every 30 years or so, the mature eggs would fall to the ground. The report said the stone eggs appeared dark blue in color and looked like dinosaur eggs. Dinosaur eggs, fool. Dinosaur eggs. So they told you things are over 600 pounds, right? You heard that, right? They said these things are over 600 pounds. That they fall every 30 years. They got this shit down to a science. Hmm, 30, 30, 30. Again, love to Perusalem, who's breaking down a wonderful timepiece over there. And he's, you know, showing you how each month is 30 days. It's amazing how things in these threes, these threes, you know, they want to hijack it into a trinity. But, you know, it's all about that three, six, nine. I mean, you're unlocking a code. What the Tesla says, you want to unlock the secrets, you got to comprehend those numbers, 3, 6, and 9, and it's all 3, and it's all 9. Your dragon eggs fall every 30 years, they're over 600 pounds, and what else? The report said the stone eggs appeared dark blue in color and looked like dinosaur eggs. Dinosaur! The video said when the journalists arrived... Some of the eggs had just started to grow while others seemed to be ready to drop. There are more than 100 families living in the village and they had reportedly collected more than 100 stone eggs. Wow. They believed that the objects would bring good luck to their lives and help the newlywed couples have baby boys. Although the mysterious phenomenon has been believed that the objects would bring good luck to their lives and help the newlywed couples have baby boys families living in the village and they had reportedly collected more than 100 stone eggs 100 dragons these people have collected over a hundred dragons now what's going to happen when these stones hatch because notice notice wise ones real ones Shabbat Shalom peace up Have they even came close to mentioning what's inside of these things? Should I play it from the beginning? Or do you just, will you rock with me when I say they haven't even mentioned what could be inside these things? They're just saying all these facts and everybody's like, what is it, man? What is it, man? Keep listening. Let's see if they reveal what's inside of this egg. They believed that the objects would bring good luck to their lives and help the newlywed couples have baby boys. Although the mysterious phenomenon has been widely reported in China, 
scientists are yet to give an official explanation to it. Over the years, geologists in China have provided some possible explanations to the cause of the phenomenon. However, none official ones have been announced. The stone eggs were lumps formed by calcium carbonate molecules in the deep sea around 500 million years ago during the Cambrian period, claimed Dr. Wang Shenzhen from the Bureau of Geology and Mineral Exploration and Development of Gizhu. In a book called Scare... All right, so now their scientists are going to try to explain the, this shit away, you know. So just like our scientists, they're going to be like, uh, I think it was water... I think water formed the spherical rock over 60 million years. <laughs> the people are worshiping these motherfuckers. They, they know they're not worshiping a rock. They know they're growing. Some say uh, some are just starting. Some are ready to what? Drop. The trees are giving birth to dragons. Oh, wow. Very phenomena. Dr. Wang said the deep sea turned into high mountains over time, and these lumps became lodged in the mountains. Dragon. And because mudstone, which forms the mountains, weathers more quickly than the lumps, <laughs> it appears that the cliff is giving birth to the eggs. It appears. He's calling them lumps. Dr. Wang's opinion was largely agreed by Professor Su Ronghua from Institute. Oh, he's agreed. He was agreed by Professor. Institute of Geology and Geophysics. Chinese Academy of Science. Oh, it's a scientist. But Professor Su said the lumps were made with silicon dioxide. In explaining why the object... Fancy, fancy. When they give you fancy words, you just dismiss it. Oh, okay. Silicon dioxide. Got it. You say, whoa, whoa, these are growing, man. These are growing and falling out, man. They're not a part of a rock formation. They're growing out the tree and falling out. Oh, uh, uh, uh silicon dioxide. Okay, Okay, got you, boss. Sil silicon dioxide. Silicon dioxide. Makes sense. Surround. Professor Su told DW News, a sphere has the smallest superficial area compared to other shapes with the same volume. As such, it would take the least effort for the molecules to form a sphere than the other shapes. Professor Su said running water could also be a factor why the lumps are round. Really? Because water runs all over the place. I mean, I see water falls in rigid rocks. I see water falls in rigid rocks. And I have stones growing out of trees. But it must be the water. It must be the water flow. He added that similar phenomena had been observed in Baidehi, North China, and Xinjiang. North Whoa, sim similar phenomena. So this shit is happening all over China. Now they're just paying attention. Are you? West China. Are you? Look at him holding your baby. These are going to fly to a Negro. And he's going to say, what's up, dragon? And you're going to be like, what's up, dragon? Are well, you ready to rock? Like, let go. <laughs> Yeah. Pure water. Man, uh, peace to you, UFO mania. I mean, you got to be a UFO maniac to even come close to not be worried about your reputation saying that dragons are growing out of trees, except they didn't say what's in the egg. I mean, how do you not say what's inside of these eggs? How do you do a whole drop and not say what even is a possibility of what's being inside the egg? But you know what? Since we decided to do a little bit of looking around, maybe we know what's inside of a stone egg growing out of a tree. Books as well. So uh, he says it lays its eggs on the land and lives there during the daytime, while at night it lives in the water. Its claws are strong, and the scaly, the scaly skin on its back cannot be sundered. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Some cultures depict the dragon as a serpent born from a rooster's egg incubated in manure, while others said it arose from the combining of a human or worm with metal. That's weird. Ancient Chinese sources say the dragons are hatched from stones as snakes or born from sea plants or aged pine trees. That's that's a bit weird as well. You know how people like to... Aged pine trees. Yeah, that's, 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 that's a bit weird. A bit weird, man. All right, man, let's get out of here. 
To see beyond all limitations is what you must do as a dragonfly. This is from the dragonflywebsite.com, man. Uh, I'm not going to get all this, man. But I just want to get it from here. In North and Native American culture, of course, it has to do with the American. The copper color race found here. The serpent, the dragon, the dragon, the fiery flying serpent. We're talking Moshe staff. Giving you life. So in Native American culture dragon flies and we surfed you know get part one you know what i mean we surf in the waves that what if these dragon flies are your dragons what if they're in essence of your dragons that's been preserved you know while they're being let's say born in these trees let's say that they are telepathically connected to these dragon flies let's just say that they're out here trying to get reconnected to you in real time while they're still in the womb and when they get hatched it's on the cracking so if you see a dragon fly don't be afraid you know I saw one two days ago or a couple of them hovering over you know what I'm saying my little porch area the next day I'm taking my children for a walk dragon fly alright that's yesterday I don't think I saw one today but I'm just saying we see what we see. So in Native American culture, dragonflies represent swiftness and activity. So will you be swift? Will you be active? What activity? Are we returning somewhere? Are we going somewhere? For the Navajo, they symbolize pure water. Make scoot all over. Make sure you can see. I'm looking out for you. In Navajo or American culture, they symbolize pure water. Oh wow! You know what pure water look like? Fresh out of Judah, Utah, Utah. You die, how I who die. I'm talking Kalei Loose. I'm talking How We Cool. I'm talking Sibola, Shimbala. Pure water. This is from dragonflysite.com. I can't make this up. The dragon, the word dragonfly has its source in the myth or reality that dragonflies were once dragons. All right. So I'm not the only one surfing this wave. I didn't read this and then come up with some theory. I started searching. Hawa, hawa. We started searching together. Hawa Stu kept dropping Dragon Drop and AD and all the tribe kept dropping Dragon Drop. Uno. Isaac, man, you know. All my sisters. La Larissa with the Leviathan Dragon Drop. Ty Battle doing poetry on Dragon Drop. Together we're saying... The word dragonfly has its source in reality that the dragonflies were once dragons. In Native American culture, they symbolize pure water. Flowing, right? And feature commonly in Zuni pottery. Zuni. Remember, when we dug on Cibola, this is how this is connecting. How we cool is the promised land. We're talking the four corners. Um, you know what I'm saying? Kalelus, Cibola. It's also called the Zuni Cibola Complex. Get all the Chronicle of Aka Core so you can get the Zuni drop. Because we got, you know what I'm saying, some good job connecting with this Graham Hancock when he dug on the Zuni. Let's see if we can find it quickly. I mean, there's a lot going on with the Meshechs. Who are the Meshechs? Meshe, Meshe. 
Oh, the word Meshach. The Meshachs were the slaves of the Phoenicians or the Egyptians. We're talking the tribes of Moses. They were glorified slaves. Ah, they were special slaves. I see. I see. Okay. Let's see if we can find a Zuni. Let's find a Zuni before we go loony. You got Moscow, Mashika. Remember, man, we are the Americans. The Americans know them as Mashika or Mexican. Mexica is a neutral name. Mexiocan, like Michigan. Mexiocan, like Michigan. Mexiocan. Khan means priest. Priest Moses. Mexiocan is priest Moshe. Priest Moses in Mexico. And if you say you're Mex Mexican or Mexican, you're saying you're from the tribes of Priest Moses. The Kaaba color race is found here, the American. Moshe, Moshika, and Peru. We're talking to Peru. All right, all right. That's a big hint for something. I'm going to keep it going. Here in the United States, they are called Muskegon, Muskogee. Ah, uh, what about the Muscogee tribes? Mexi Mexican and Mahoka, Mahoki, Mahoka, Mahoka. All right. The Hopis are known as Mokis. All right, man. All around you, right? Mexicanos of Mexico. It's a lot of drop in this little uh, shindig right here, man. We got to dig on it some more for sure. Let's get to this Zuni. We're right here. We're talking about Mexico, New Mexico. Uh, how we coo. I remember the first Moor Estevanico was killed in how we coo for rolling up in the promised land with decorations that they said were decorations of death. So we're talking northwest New Mexico and even extended as far as Zuni, New Mexico. They're talking about the Tusk Toroscan kingdom. We're talking about the conquest of the Michoacan, all right, extended as far as Zuni and New Mexico. His base, he bases his argument on the place named Zebulon, which appears in the Codex. So Zuni in New Mexico, in the Codex, appears as Zebulon, tribes of Israel. So when they mention the Zuni, they're talking about the tribe of Zebulon, which appears in your indigenous Codex. Another name for Zuni. Zebulon is another name for Zuni. Zebulon, Zebulon, the tribes of Israel. We're talking promised land and how we cool. We're talking the four corners in New Mexico. We're talking you, doll. We're talking that pure Wata. Zuni, the Zuni Cibola. Cibola is Shimbala. Shim name. Shim name. Named from me. Shim the name. Sheba is Shimbala. Sheba is from Shimbala, which is right here in Cibola, which is Shimbala, which is Kalelus, which is Utah. This is the pure water of the Zuni Cibola. This is the pure water of Udaw. Pure water, we say. Remember. Oh, it's my dragonfly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The North, the Native American, all right? The Native American, in, you know, culture. Dragonflies represent swiftness, activity, and symbolize pure water. And feature commonly in Zuni pottery. Zuni, Zuni, Zuni. Zuni in New Mexico. He bases his argument on the place named Zebulon. Which appears in the Codex. Another name for Zuni. Surfed away. Surfed away with me. I surfed away with you. Zuni pottery. In Native American culture, dragonflies represent swiftness and activity for the Navajo. They symbolize pure water and feature commonly in Zuni pottery. So these dragonflies are featured commonly among Israel. 
dragons are featured commonly among Israel because you're only referring to fire, water, ether, and land, which is Adam. What else represents fire, water, air, and land? I'll wait. Zuni is Zebulon. Let's get this. Dragonfly, or what does it mean, dragonfly? And fly hovering around a pond or any other water body? If yes, then you'd know that they are beautiful creatures with transparent wings that reflect and refract light to create the colors of the rainbow. But there's more to the dragonfly than what appears to the eye, and here we shall discover the hidden aspects of its symbolism. Time is for dragonflies and angels. The former live too little and the latter live too long. James Thurber the dragonfly has many unique qualities that distinguish it from the millions of other insects on the planet. It is due to this reason that they have never ceased to fascinate man. A brief look at all things that they symbolize, and we cannot help but believe that we indeed have a lot to learn from them. So, what are we waiting for? Let's delve into the intriguing world of dragonfly symbolism and discover for ourselves the reason these insects have been associated with everything from freedom to the concept of life after death. Click on the images to know about each aspect of dragonfly symbolism. Facets of dragonfly symbolism. Legends and folklore. Inking the symbolism. Dream of a dragonfly. General symbolism. Because of its many unique abilities, the dragonfly was considered special across cultures. So, over the ages, it went on to be associated with a lot many things, and here we shall have a look at them. Transformation and renewal of the dragonfly undergoes metamorphosis during its life cycle, and has to remain in the larval stage for most part of its life before... Transformation, Negro. It's time. It emerges as a graceful and colorful insect that we know. These insects lay their eggs on the surface of water, and the larva that comes out of the egg is a grayish-brown aquatic creature that feeds on aquatic plants and larvae of small insects such as flies and mosquitoes. It sheds its casing or outer layer at regular intervals, and at the end of the larval stage, comes out of the water, climbs on a blade of grass, sheds its casing for the last time, and the adult emerges. In contrast to the dull and drab larva that breathes through gills, the adult dragonfly is a vibrant and swift creature with beautiful wings. This aspect of its life symbolizes transformation and renewal, and is fire, water, air, and land. Even associated with spiritual renewal and self-realization. In Native American legends, the dragonfly is a symbol of resurrection and renewal after hardship. Freedom the dragonfly is a carefree insect type. In your culture, this represents resurrection and what? Listen, listen, America. Self-realization. In Native American legends, the dragonfly is a symbol of resurrection and renewal after hardship. Let go! Freedom the dragonfly is a carefree insect that symbolizes free spirit, swiftness, and activity. The fact that the adult dragonfly breaks free from its larval stage, in which it remains for a major part of its life, is a symbol for freedom. Freedom! The Native Americans considered the dragonfly as a symbol of swiftness and activity. Philosophy of life and death. When the dragon free from its larval stage, in which it remains for a major part of its life, is a symbol for freedom. The Native Americans considered the dragonfly as a symbol of swiftness and swiftness, and activity. The fact that the adult dragonfly breaks free from its larval stage, in which it remains for a major part of its life, is a symbol for freedom. Is a symbol for freedom. Freedom is what we desire and what we require. And if you're bonding with your dragonflies, you're bonding with freedom. If you're bonding with your dragons, you're bonding, you're bonding with the fire, the water, the air, the earth that you are. That hawa that you are. You know, dragonflies are always uh, symbolized. You know, they like to flip the script, right? Listen to how they flip the script.
dragonfly is called Nego. Obsudecorando in Finnish, which many would translate literally as wolf's carrying pole. Yeah. But originally, the name of the bug was inverted from suvi, that means summer. The reason for it to be Sudenkorando instead of Suvenkorando is simple. Finland is full of dialects, and people with other dialects may articulate words differently. Many people may see the dragonfly as rapidly flying bug that lives only during warm summer days. But in the old books, dragonfly was seen as a servant of the dark forces. A servant of the dark forces. Sounds like they're talking Satan, hmm? Sounds like they're talking how they were trying to make Leviathan Satan, hmm? So the dragonfly is put on the same perspective as Leviathan as the Negro. On Finnish tongues, dragonfly had their own nicknames and was called Pirun Bundari, Pirun Hevonen, and Pahan Hevonen. Devil's horse, devil's steel yard, devil's horse. In the folklore, this was interpreted that the devil used the dragonfly to weigh the people's souls. The devil used the dragonflies to wake people's souls, so flip it, reverse. That means a wise using the dragonflies to wake your soul. When a dragonfly flew around your head, your soul was waked, and you should expect an injury as punishment. Your soul was weighed, okay, so now you're being weighed. So on one, you flip the script, and you're gaining transformation and freedom. Now your soul is being weighed. You see how the sorcerer hijack does it. There are multiple myths surrounding these insects. According to some, dragonflies predicted misfortunes. If they now they predict misfortune when before they protected fortune, they presented fortune. The dragonfly would appear. It was seen as a forecast for a war or an accident. A war, a war. So they were at war against your dragons and you. And when dragonflies appeared. They knew time was up for them. Some people would avoid sleeping outside because dragonflies would then puncture your eyes or yet sew shut the eyes of sleeping person. So your dragonflies were sewing their eyes shut. Your dragonflies were sewing the eyes of the hijack shut while it saw perfectly. It shut their eyes when your eyes were perfectly open seeing in 360 degrees. Dragonfly could catch a strand of hair and hide it in a tree stump. And when the stump rot, Whoa. the person would die. When the stump rot, the person would die? So the dragonflies would take this stuff back to the mountains, which are trees. And they would put it right inside of the what? The tree stump. They would put it right inside of the tree stump. <laughs> I can't make this stuff up. The origin of devil's horse and the English word dragonfly may have stemmed from the Romanian word drag, which means both devil and dragon. Saint George had a horse that turned into flying insect under control of the devil. As mentioned before, Finland isn't the only country where old folk believe that the dragonfly has something to do with the devil. Hmm. Many European countries have their own kind of words for the dragonfly. For example, in Swedish, it is called Trollslenda, that means witch spindle. Witch spindle? Who were they calling witches in the Salem witches, witches trial? The Salem, Salem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem witches. You are the witches. You have the magic. You are the Salem witches trial. And who's the instrument of these witches with magic? Dragons and dragonflies. They're talking about the copper color con, a merry con. In German, they have two different words for dragonfly. Teufelsnadel, meaning devil's needle, and Wasserhexe, which means water witch. Mm, water. In Spanish, dragonfly is called Caballito del Diablo, which means the devil's horse. So everyone has a confederacy against dragons and dragonflies. Wow. Oh, wow. If the hijack hates the dragonfly, if the hijack hates and demonizes the dragonfly, maybe it's for a good reason.
I'm going to leave this link for you. Dragons and winged serpents, dragons and snakes are symbols for human DNA, fire representing souls, sparks of light emanating from the flame of creation. Dragons are winged beings portrayed in the ancient mythologies of most cultures. They link with winged gods from the heavens who came to earth to create the human race and are very important symbolically or symbology in the creation blueprint of our reality. Much of dragon lore tells us that dragons were loathsome beasts of evil enemies to humankind, but dragons were born of a time other than men, a time of chaos created out of destruction. The dragon is a famous, fabulous, and universal symbolic figure found in most cultures throughout the world. Symbology of the dragon, you got the Gnostic, the alchemy, the guardian of the flaming pearl, you're the, the pearl, the winged. So you got these angelic, you know, spins being put on it. You got to get your own. Many legends say dragons were fabulous animals, usually represented as monstrous winged and scaly serpent or saurian with a crested head and enormous claws represented usually as a gigantic reptile breathing fire. Having lion's claws, a tail of a serpent, wings, and scaly skin. All right. Among the earliest forms, dragons were associated with the great mother, the water god, and the warrior sun god. So the mother and the father. Then they're going to, you know, put their little spin and do their thing, man. So, you know, dogs are high, drag. We'll just see what you can pull out of this link. Dragons have been an integral part of the culture of Chinese, Koreans, Japanese people since the beginning of the rec recorded history. So you got to, you know, drag and drop over there. Chinese dragon is a central figure of both good and evil. So you only get the evil, not the good over here, but they get the good and the evil, which is.